The title of my message today is, What You Thinking? <laughs> We're going to be in Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1 through verse 9. I'm reading it out of the NLT. It says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promise you what I promised Moses. Whatever you set you set foot, you will be will be on land. I'm sorry, whatever you set foot. You will be on land I have given you, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates rivers in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I will give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses give, gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this day. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us, that you have never, ever, ever left. Lord, be with us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. What you thinking? Now, most of us have heard that phrase. If you, if you haven't heard it in that way, it's probably go, the more proper is, what are you thinking? But what you thinking is a very pigeon way of, very pigeon way, sorry, very, Island way of parents asking their kids what they were doing when they did something wrong. What you thinking? And the kids' normal response is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There was a line from the Cosby show where one of the kids, I want to say it was Vanessa, took the car to go to, go to a concert in another state and they stopped in Delaware for donuts, and the car got stolen, and instead of calling the parents to say what happened, they went to the concert. And Dr. Huxtable looks over and asks, what were you thinking? And she went, I wasn't. And he goes, you got that right? We all have heard that phrase, what were you thinking? What were you doing? What, what in the world are you thinking? And when we begin, to look at everything going on today in our world here in America and in the world in general. My question to you is this, what you thinking? What you thinking? Because everything you think determines how it will go for you. You might have heard a long time ago, the thing in between your ears is nothing but a big computer. Now, if you were a real nerd, you would understand that when computers first came out, there really wasn't anything in the computer to help it remember anything. It had the RAM, it had everything else like that for it to run. But to put something in there for it to remember, you have to get this big old floppy disk that had the program, and you would put it inside there. This is before they had the eject button, so you have to 
where the disc was actually floppy. I remember it because I thought it was the most fascinating thing to go into an elementary school, to go into the old computer room just to play old school Oregon Trail on the black and green screen. See, I'm pretty sure, like, Lana and Kelly, I'm not quite sure if you guys remember those. I don't think you do. Probably not, right? No? Oh, you do? Yeah. Julius, you don't remember that. Well, I played Oregon Trail. Not on, the, not on the computer that I played Oregon Trail on. I still played it, though. <laughs> And it was so, like, fascinating to me, it, like, real 8-bit technology, where the theme song wasn't really that great, it was just a computer going, ee, 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 ee. <laughs> And as technology began to grow, next thing you know, the memory was no longer put on the floppy, but it was built in. But if you ever took it apart, the original hard drive of the computer where the memory was, was a disk like a small record where there was a needle that wrote everything on the disc. So believe it or not, even if you deleted something off of your computer, because it was written literally on the disc, it was off your screen but not out of the computer. And the only way to truly erase that from the computer was to get a very strong magnet, put it up against it, and wipe it so the lines would disappear. Are some of you thinking about your old computers now, what you had on top of there, and how it's, how it's just gone? Did you know that there's actually old hard drives in like Thailand and stuff like that? They sell those little things. That they're they're finding stuff about from, from people people still on there because it's they thought it was erased, but it's not. Until what you have today, what they call a solid state drive which is no bigger than this. You put it in like the camera. It's what they used to put in the camera, like the memory card, the small memory cards. That's what memory is today on a computer. The great thing about a solid straight state drive is that once you say delete it, the computer will actually go, okay, bye. We have not gotten to that point yet in our minds where we have a solid state drive where we can go, that's not important. Goodbye. Our brains are actually like the old this hard drive computer where everything is written on it. You may not remember off the top of your head something that happened, you know, 40 years ago, but it's there. How many of you just out of the blue, just like out of nowhere? A memory just pop into your head and you're just like, whoa, wow, that's like a long time ago, wasn't it? That is something that has been uploaded into your brain and it will be there forever. And ever. And ever. If you want a really good example of what I mean, go and watch the movie Inside Out where they're in like the brain canals and they send the same commercial to the brain as a memory, the little brain cells just for fun. You ever get a jingle stuck in your head? <laughs> Our brain is a very, 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 very interesting organ. Pumping protons and neutrons and everything else like that and remembering everything that we've seen, everything we've touched, if you were to dig far enough in there, I'm pretty sure your brain will remember the day you were born. You just have to dig way back. And because everything else that you have learned has been more, I guess, helpful for you than the day you were born, your brain is like, it's important, but not that important. We need to be careful of what we think about. Because what we think about will show, will make us act a certain way, make us do things a certain way that is either beneficial for us and others or tragic for us and others. Let me just say this. Facebook is not a good place to get 
local news, any news at all. Now, I know a lot of people who go over there and they re, they reshare an article that they saw on Facebook, everything else like that. I'm not a real big fan of trusting a platform which has a news article and then later on it has on top of there a video about 550 ways how to do this or how to clean your own pipes or do this and do that or go over there and say, there's so many things happening on there. It's not a good source. But there are people who live their entire life off of this. And it affects the way they think. It affects what they do and what they say. What does that have to do about us? Because a lot of people who are on top of social media right now, putting stuff up, are the ones who call themselves Christians. And it's scary and it's concerning. There has to be a reason why God told Joshua to meditate on this book of law day and night. Now, obviously, there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram or anything else like that back in those days. But there was outside influences. There were outside influences that began to change and alter the people's minds. You don't believe me? Go back 40 years before Joshua when Moses sent the spies into the promised land. A set of spies brought back the bounty of the land and say, look at this place. This place is marvelous. This place is great. Oh, we got to have it. We can take it. And everybody else didn't look at what the, the land had, but they looked at the people there and it influenced them. It changed their thinking. All of a sudden, it wasn't the promised land anymore. It was the land of giants. It was not the land that God had given us who he said that I will give you this land. It was we will surely be killed because these people are huge. Their thinking automatically changed. Tim said it best a couple weeks ago at the end of the year. The one thing that 2020 taught him was that his trust was in God. It wasn't in anything else, but he made sure that he put his trust back in God. We have to make sure that we not only put our trust in God, but we make sure our mind is with God as well. That everything that comes out of our mind is godly. Every single topic we talk about is godly. When we think about what's happening in the nation right now, when we think about the previous administration, the current administration, administration from past, the government, or whatever, is the first thing that comes through our mind, the thing that the Bible tells us to do for people who are in leadership over us. Or is the first thing that comes through our mind, man, they're messing up this place. They're doing this, they're doing that. But if you meditate on the word day and night, the word says that you are to pray for those who are in leadership over you. See, complaining can be a mindset. It can be a mindset right then and there. It's easy to complain and it's easy to do that. But once you begin to work who God is into your heart, into your mind, your mindset has to change. It has to change. It can no longer be the first thing up to bat is everything that person has done wrong. It cannot be first thing up to bat looking at the person's sin and going, oh my gosh, they are so sinful, they're this, they're that, they're this, they're that. It cannot be the first thing because the first thing that Jesus said to people who are coming up to him who are seeking healing was, your sins are forgiven. Not you nasty. <laughs> Pastor talked about last week the man they dropped through the roof. 
wherever in that story do we read and see that when his friends dropped the man through the roof that Jesus went, dude, you're gross. Like, no, no. The first thing that Jesus said was, your sins are forgiven. And you can see the mind set in that story when Jesus for first forgiving the sins of that man and then everybody else in the room, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, everyone else going, who is this guy who says he forgives sins? Do you see the different mindsets? We must be people who are willing and have the mindset and the heart to show grace and mercy before we ever show judgment. We have to be people that when we think about individuals, the first thing to come to our mind is not what they've done to you, what they've done to others, what they've done to anybody else, but it is to pray for them. Mm -hmm. Is to stop and go, okay, number one, there is a reason why deep in your memory banks, the little geek who's working in your brain, he goes, let's bring this up today. There's a reason why for that. And a lot of times it's God going, hey, I need you to pray for this person. Sometimes God can be very specific and be like, Jack, I need you to pray for this person, please. And other times he'll just drop the person in your mind. Now, is our mindset at the point where we will go over there and go, Father? Or is our mindset at the point where if that person drops to our mind, our first reaction is, <sighs> It makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. The scripture verse that Pastor said this morning, Romans 12, 2, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but, be, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We need to be able to take every single thought that comes into our mind and put it up against the word of God and see if it's a good thought or a bad thought, whether it's worth thinking about, whether it's worth, whether it's worth showing or not. Psalms 119, 105 through 106 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I promise it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. What you thinking? What is in your mind? And does it line up? With the word? Does it line up with God? Does it line up with the characteristics of who Jesus is? Or does it look just like everyone else? Is your mind a place of prayer or is your mind entertainment tonight? Still in everybody's business. Is your mind a place where God is in control? Or is your mind an Instagram filter changes every single picture you take? Some of us live our lives, and we may, even if we don't have Instagram, we live our lives as if we are Instagram. We gotta do this, we gotta do that, we gotta have this, we gotta do that. I get. I get shamed a lot for just posting food on my Instagram. 
which I have no problem with. I am. I will boldly confess that if you go to my Instagram, 98.9% of the photos on my Instagram is food. <laughs> that you have some scriptures and you have everything else like that. And then maybe like the 0.00001%, you'll finally see a picture of my face. Maybe. And it probably has a filter on it to make it look ridiculous. Because I find it funny. But a lot of times, and especially in this modern Christianity and how it is, is that we live our life as if we're on Instagram. We have our Bible in our hand. We're going over there. We stop and we post. Boom! Going to church. Hashtag Jesus. They're standing in the back of the church doing worship with their hands raised. Boom! Worshiping the Lord. It's all for show. Then when they walk out the door, their mind is still exactly the same. The Bible says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. What we have in our mind, what we have in our heart, shows other people who we really are. It shows other people who we represent, whether we represent it well or not. Because here's the thing, you either represent Christ well or you represent the devil well. There is no in between. Come on. You either represent Christ and all that he says and does. Or you represent a version of Christ which is not Jesus, it's against Jesus, you, I guess you can call it an antichrist. Now, I know a lot of people when they hear the word antichrist, they're thinking of the antichrist and everything else like that. Antichrist literally means against Christ. That is the definition of it. So are our thoughts, are our mindsets, is what's in our, in our mind, in our heart, a demonstration and an example of who Christ is? Or is it, a, is it a figure of Christ, but not Christ? A couple weeks ago, I got, when the Quantum Winds came in. Anytime Quantum Winds shows up, my body loves to do this thing where it's just like, hey, guess what? Phlegm. And I was battling it with just a whole bunch of phlegm, like coughing it up, everything else, sneezing and all that type of stuff. And it actually happened one of the Sundays, I think it was maybe the 10th, when we, we weren't uh, doing it in person. And I was in my car going somewhere and I just felt it build up right here. <laughs> And it was really, 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 really bad, like to the point where I felt like I was choking. I was thinking, I have to run back inside, get my inhaler. So I'm outside my house, in my car, waiting to see, do I need to run and get my inhaler? Which is kind of funny that I think about it, an asthmatic running to get his inhaler, whatever. And so I'm over there, and I'm coughing, and I'm coughing, and I'm coughing, and you know, little specks come out, and I can feel it build up in the back of my nose. And so I grab a napkin and I start blowing my nose. And blowing my nose, blowing my nose, blowing my nose. I felt like I was blowing my nose for half an hour and nothing was coming out. Then all of a sudden I felt something come out. And I was like, okay, okay, good. Oh, uh, disclaimer alert, if you have a weak stomach, this might freak you out. Um, I should have said at the beginning of the story, sorry. And I begin to pull away. Now, the one thing that some of you might think is weird is my doctor, because I am asthmatic and I do have this little case of phlegm, he always tells me to look at it to see what color it is. I'm not gonna tell you what color it was. So, Auntie Amanda, are you laughing? <laughs> oh, no, 
And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things is that I blew my nose and I felt it stop. And so I began to pull away. And there is this line that is coming out of my nose. And I'm going, what? Now, literally, my hand is out to here, and there is a dip. And I am still going, and it's still coming out. And I'm going, what is this? I got to the point where, Tim, I could feel it coming from right here. And like, I felt it tickling the back of my eyeball. I gave you the warning. <laughs> and it's, I get it right here, and then finally it all comes out. I had a two foot snot <laughs> that came out of my nose. And you know what? I could breathe better. <laughs> like, I was fascinated by it. Like, I was just staring at it, but like, oh my gosh. To the point where that little kid inside of me couldn't help myself. I got out of the car, my dad was in the yard. I went, Dad, look what came out of my nose. <laughs> I text my sisters and everything. And my timing could not be more perfect. Both of them were at brunch. But from that moment on, I could breathe so much better. It's like, I was taking deep breaths in, I'm like, ah, ah. Couldn't be doing this for like the entire week. It was like marching around, like just taking deep breaths in, even with the mask on. I was like, I didn't, I didn't care if the mask was like, it's like I could breathe normally. When we begin to change our mindsets, when we begin to work on our hearts, when we begin to take what the world has thrown at us and replace it with what God has given us, we will breathe spiritually easier. Yeah. When we renew our mind, when we get to the point where we're going, what am I thinking about? And we begin to change that. We are eliminating the phlegm that the world has put on us so we can breathe spiritually easier and understand more of who God is. Once our mindsets change, it is easier for you to breathe spiritually and understand who He is. Once you begin to change one facet of your mind, you can just take a deep breath and be like, oh, now that's God's goodness. One of the ways that will help us change our mind is to pray. First Thessalonians 5.16, it says, Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And the other way is to get into the Word. And I mean get into the Word. If you don't have the Bible app, get the Bible app. So one of the reasons why I say this is because majority of the time, how I get the word is in is I am driving to work and I am listening to it through my phone. Plug in into my radio with that really nice, I don't know if it's holly or not, but that narrator's voice. John, chapter one. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. You know, it's, it might seem tedious, it might seem boring, it might seem just stressing out, but faith comes by hearing. And the Spirit can only help your brain to bring things back to remembrance, things that you know. So to make one way to have your mindset just completely change is to get into the Word. Is to get into the Word. I mean, thank goodness for modern technology. You don't even have to read it. You can listen to it. 
if you have a hard time listening to, I know some people, they don't like driving and hearing people talk. Put it on when you're sleeping. You'd be surprised what your brain will absorb what you're sleeping. When you sleep, your, your body goes into recovery mode. It begins to fix things and everything else like that. Oh, what would happen if you had the Word of God just speaking inside there while your body was getting nice and recovered? Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things. They are excellent and worthy of praise. That is Paul in the ending part of his message. And he's going, out of the entire book of Philippians, the last thing he says, he goes, oh, and just this, my final words to you. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Mm -hmm. think, about, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Let your mind always be looking at the world through the mindset of Christ and not the mindset of everybody else. But really, the world's going to trash. Yeah, we know it will be. But when Jesus looked at the world, what did he see? He saw people who were lost and who needed salvation. He saw the broken and the needy who are wondering where God is and God's not right in front of them. And he's going, I am here. He looked at the world through the eyes of grace and mercy. Yes, one day he will look at the world through the eyes of judgment. But guess what? He's the only righteous one who can. Mm -hmm. My challenge for you this week is that whether you're on social media, whether you're in the newspaper, whether you're on people and they're talking, no matter what they talk about, no matter what you read, no matter what you do, that if your thoughts about whatever the subject is, whatever the, whoever the person is, or whatever they're talking about. If your thoughts do not line up with the word, change your mindset. Change your mindset. And be, God, forgive me for thinking this way. Let me focus on you in this situation. Let me focus on you in this situation, church. What you think? What you think?